Everyone laughed at the black boy wanting to be a doctor, but Caden never let their ridicule break him. Years later, when a mysterious illness strikes his hometown, the same people who once doubted him come begging for his help. Can Caden forgive those who once humiliated him, or will the scars of the past prove too much? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today, and if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Caden stood at the front of the classroom, his heart pounding with excitement. He had practiced his presentation all week, eager to share his dream with his classmates. Taking a deep breath, he looked out at the sea of faces and began to speak. When I grow up, Caden said, his voice filled with hope, I want to be a doctor. For a moment, the room was silent. Then, like a dam bursting, laughter erupted from every corner. Caden's classmates pointed and giggled, some even holding their stomachs as they doubled over in amusement. Caden's smile faltered, confusion and hurt washing over him. He looked to Mrs. Gibbons, his teacher, for support, but instead of encouragement, he saw only a condescending smile on her face. Now, class, Mrs. Gibbons said, her voice tinged with amusement. Let's settle down. Caden, that's a very ambitious dream. Perhaps something more realistic would be better suited for you. The words stung like a slap. Caden felt his cheeks burn with embarrassment. He wanted to disappear, to sink into the floor and vanish from sight. But he stood there, frozen, as the laughter continued to echo around him. Thank you, Caden, Mrs. Gibbons said, dismissing him back to his seat. Next presenter, please. Caden walked back to his desk, his legs feeling like lead. He slumped into his chair, trying to make himself as small as possible. The rest of the presentations passed in a blur, but Caden couldn't focus. All he could hear was the laughter. All he could see was Mrs. Gibbons' patronizing smile. When the final bell rang, Caden was the first one out the door. He walked home alone, his backpack feeling heavier than usual. The sunny day seemed to mock his gloomy mood. As he trudged along the sidewalk, Caden replayed the scene in his mind over and over. Why had they laughed? Was it really so funny to think he could be a doctor? He thought about his father, who had always encouraged him to dream big, but now those dreams felt silly and out of reach. Caden kicked a pebble, watching it skitter across the pavement. Maybe Mrs. Gibbons is right, he muttered to himself. Maybe I should pick something more realistic. The thought made his heart ache. Being a doctor had been his dream for as long as he could remember. He wanted to help people, to make a difference in the world. But now, that dream seemed as distant as the stars. As he neared his house, Caden felt a heaviness settle over him. He wondered if he should tell his mom about what happened, but the thought of seeing disappointment in her eyes was too much to bear. Caden paused at the front door, his hand on the knob. He took a deep breath, trying to push away the hurt and doubt. One question echoed in his mind. Was his dream really worth all this pain? As Caden stepped into the house, the warmth of home embraced him. But even the familiar scent of his mother's cooking couldn't lift his spirits. He trudged into the kitchen, his shoulders slumped under the weight of the day. Evelyn looked up from the stove, her smile fading as she saw her son's downcast expression. Caden, honey, what's wrong? She asked, setting down her spatula and moving towards him. Caden shrugged, avoiding her eyes. Nothing, Mom, just a long day. Evelyn gently cupped Caden's chin, tilting his face up to meet her gaze. I know that look, baby. Something's bothering you. Why don't you tell me about it? Caden hesitated, then the words tumbled out. He told her about the presentation, the laughter, and Mrs. Gibbons' dismissive smile. As he spoke, tears welled up in his eyes. Evelyn listened, her heart breaking for her son. When he finished, she wrapped him in a tight hug. Oh, Caden, she whispered, I'm so sorry that happened to you. She led him to the kitchen table and sat down beside him. You know, your dream isn't silly at all. In fact, it's beautiful and important. Caden looked up, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Really? Evelyn nodded, her eyes shining with pride. Really? Let me tell you about some amazing people who didn't let others crush their dreams.
She told him about Dr. Charles Drew, a brilliant black doctor who revolutionized blood banking. She spoke of Dr. Mae Jemison, the first black woman in space who was also a medical doctor. With each story, Caden felt a little spark of hope reignite in his heart. You see, honey, Evelyn said, squeezing his hand. These people faced doubters too, but they didn't give up. They worked hard and made their dreams come true. Caden smiled, feeling the weight of the day start to lift. Thanks, Mom. You always know how to make me feel better. Just then, Anthony, Caden's father, walked into the kitchen. He'd overheard the conversation, and his face was creased with concern. Son, he said, his voice gruff but kind, your mother's right about dreaming big. But I gotta be honest with you, too. Anthony sat down heavily, his work-worn hands clasped on the table. Life ain't always fair, especially for folks like us. People might try to hold you back, make you feel small. Caden's smile faded and he felt the doubts creeping back in. Anthony continued, his voice softening. But that don't mean you should give up. It just means you gotta work harder, be stronger. Evelyn reached out, placing her hand over Anthony's. Your father's right, Caden. The road might be tough, but that doesn't mean it's not worth traveling. The next morning, Caden woke up feeling a little better. His mother's stories and his father's words had given him a lot to think about. After breakfast, he decided to visit Mrs. Marshall, his kind, elderly neighbor who always had a smile and a cookie for him. As Caden walked up to Mrs. Marshall's porch, he heard laughter coming from inside. He knocked on the door, and Mrs. Marshall answered with a warm smile. Caden, dear, come on in, she said, ushering him inside. My granddaughter Emily is visiting today. Caden stepped into the cozy living room and saw a little girl, about seven years old, sitting on the floor playing with dolls. Emily looked up and waved shyly. Mrs. Marshall bustled into the kitchen. I'll get you both some lemonade and cookies, she called over her shoulder. As they waited, Caden chatted with Emily about her dolls. Mrs. Marshall returned with a tray of treats, and they all sat down to enjoy them. Suddenly, Emily's eyes went wide. She started making strange gasping noises and clutching at her throat. Mrs. Marshall jumped up, her face pale with fear. Oh no, she's choking! Mrs. Marshall cried, her hands shaking as she tried to figure out what to do. For a moment, everyone froze. The room filled with panic. But then something clicked in Caden's mind. He remembered a book he'd read about first aid. Without thinking, he sprang into action. I can help, Caden said his voice steady despite his racing heart. He moved behind Emily and wrapped his arms around her waist. With determination in his eyes, Caden performed the Heimlich maneuver just like he'd seen in the book. He gave a quick, upward thrust to Emily's abdomen. Nothing happened. Caden didn't give up. He tried again, putting all his strength into it. Suddenly, a small piece of candy shot out of Emily's mouth. She took a big, gasping breath, color returning to her face. Mrs. Marshall burst into tears of relief, hugging Emily tightly. Then she turned to Caden, her eyes shining with gratitude. Caden, you saved her life, Mrs. Marshall exclaimed, pulling him into a hug. How did you know what to do? Caden felt a warmth spreading through his chest. It wasn't just pride, it was something more. It was hope. I, I read about it in a medical book, he said softly. I want to be a doctor someday. Mrs. Marshall looked at him with newfound respect. Well, young man, I'd say you're already on your way. You've got the knowledge and the quick thinking of a real doctor. As Caden looked at Emily, now safe and sound, he felt a spark ignite inside him. Maybe his dream wasn't so far-fetched after all. Maybe, just maybe, he really could become a doctor and help people. Word of Caden's heroic act spread quickly through the neighborhood. Mrs. Marshall couldn't stop talking about how the young boy had saved her granddaughter's life. Some neighbors were genuinely impressed, nodding their heads in approval when they heard the story. That Caden, Mrs. Winson from across the street said, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Imagine, a boy his age knowing what to do in an emergency. But not everyone was as kind or impressed. Mr. Thompson, the grumpy old man who lived on the corner, just scoffed when he heard the news. Lucky guess if you ask me, he grumbled. Don't go filling the boy's head with silly ideas about being a doctor. He should focus on more 
realistic goals. At school, things were just as mixed. A few of Caden's classmates started to look at him differently. Sarah, a quiet girl who sat next to him in math, actually smiled at him for the first time. I heard what you did, she whispered during class. That was really brave. Caden felt a small glow of pride at her words, but it didn't last long. As he walked down the hallway later that day, he overheard some older kids talking. Did you hear about that kid who thinks he's going to be a doctor? One of them sneered. As if. Another chimed in. Yeah, saving one person doesn't make you a doctor. He's just a dreamer. Their laughter echoed in Caden's ears, making his cheeks burn with shame. He ducked his head and hurried past, trying to ignore the ache in his chest. Even in class, things weren't much better. During a science lesson, Mrs. Gibbons asked if anyone knew what the heart's chambers were called. Caden's hand shot up, eager to share what he'd learned from his medical books. The heart has four chambers, he said confidently. The right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Mrs. Gibbons looked surprised. That's... Correct, Caden. Well done. But instead of feeling proud, Caden felt his stomach twist as he heard snickers from behind him. Teacher's pet, someone whispered. That night, as Caden lay in bed, he felt torn. Part of him still glowed with pride when he remembered Emily's face, alive and breathing because of what he'd done. But another part of him felt small and discouraged, weighed down by the mockery and disbelief of others. He thought about Sarah's smile and Mrs. Marshall's gratitude, but then he remembered the laughter in the hallway and the whispers in class. Caden sighed, staring up at the ceiling. He wanted so badly to believe in himself, to hold on to his dream. But with so many people telling him it was impossible, he couldn't help but wonder if they were right. The factory whistle blew, signaling the end of another long shift. Anthony wiped the sweat from his brow, his muscles aching from hours of hard work. As he reached for his lunchbox, a sharp pain shot through his chest. He gasped, clutching at his shirt. You all right, Anthony? His co-worker asked, concern etched on his face. Anthony tried to nod, but the world started to spin. The last thing he heard was someone shouting for help as the cold factory floor rushed up to meet him. Miles away, Caden sat at the kitchen table doing his homework. The shrill ring of the telephone made him jump. He watched as his mother answered, her face growing pale. Caden, she said, her voice shaking. Get your coat. We need to go to the hospital. It's your father. The ride to the hospital was a blur. Caden's heart pounded in his chest as he tried to make sense of what was happening. His mother's knuckles were white on the steering wheel, her lips moving in silent prayer. At the hospital, they found Anthony lying in a bed, tubes and wires attached to his body. Caden had never seen his strong father look so small and fragile. The sight made his stomach churn. A doctor in a white coat approached them his face serious. Mrs. Johnson, your husband has suffered a severe heart attack. His condition is critical. Caden's mother gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. But he'll be okay, right? You can help him? The doctor hesitated and Caden felt a chill run down his spine. There are treatments that could significantly improve his chances, but... The doctor paused, looking uncomfortable. I'm afraid they're quite expensive and not covered by your insurance. Caden watched as his mother's face crumpled. She turned away, trying to hide her tears. Caden felt like he couldn't breathe. He looked at his father, lying there so still, and then at the shiny medical equipment surrounding him. Equipment that could save his life if only they could afford it. In that moment, Caden felt smaller than he ever had before. All his dreams of becoming a doctor, of helping people, seemed to crumble away. What good were those dreams if he couldn't even help his own father? He thought of all the times Anthony had worked late, had skipped meals so Caden could have new shoes or books. And now, when his father needed help the most, there was nothing Caden could do. The unfairness of it all hit Caden like a punch to the gut. He clenched his fists, fighting back tears. This wasn't right. People shouldn't have to suffer just because they couldn't afford care. His father shouldn't have to suffer. As Caden stood there, watching his mother try to comfort his unconscious father, he felt a deep, aching powerlessness. His dreams of becoming a doctor, 
of making a difference, seemed further away than ever before. The world felt too big, too cruel, and Caden felt too small to change any of it. Evelyn found Caden sitting alone in the hospital waiting room, his shoulders slumped and his eyes fixed on the floor. She sat down next to him, placing a gentle hand on his back. Caden, honey, she said softly. I know you're scared. I am too. And I Caden looked up at his mother, his eyes brimming with tears. Mom, what if, what if dad doesn't make it? And even if he does, how will we ever pay for his treatment? Evelyn took a deep breath, fighting back her own tears. She pulled Caden close, wrapping her arms around him. I don't have all the answers, sweetheart. But I do know one thing for sure. Your father would want you to keep your dream alive no matter what happens. Caden pulled away, his face twisted with confusion and pain. But how can I think about becoming a doctor when dad is lying in there, fighting for his life? It all seems so pointless now. Evelyn cupped Caden's face in her hands, her eyes filled with love and determination. Listen to me, Caden. Your dream isn't pointless. It's more important now than ever before. She wiped a tear from Caden's cheek with her thumb. You want to know why? Because right now, there are families just like ours, scared and hurting because they can't afford the care their loved ones need. And one day you'll be the doctor who can help them. Caden sniffled, but his eyes widened as he listened to his mother's words. You have a gift, Caden, Evelyn continued, her voice growing stronger. A gift of healing, of caring. I've seen it in you since you were little. Remember how you helped Mrs. Marshall's granddaughter? That wasn't just luck. That was your calling showing itself. A small smile tugged at the corners of Caden's mouth as he remembered that day. The world needs more doctors like you, honey. Doctors who understand what it's like to be on this side of things. Doctors who will fight for those who can't afford care. You can make a real difference in the world, Caden. I believe that with all my heart. Evelyn's words washed over Caden like a warm embrace. He felt something stir inside him, a tiny spark of hope in the midst of all the fear and uncertainty. But what about Dad? Caden asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Evelyn pulled him close again, resting her cheek on the top of his head. We're going to do everything we can for your father. And no matter what happens, he would be so proud to know that you're not giving up on your dream, that you're going to use what's happening now to fuel your determination to help others. Caden nodded slowly, feeling the weight of his mother's faith in him. It was a heavy burden, but also a source of strength. He might feel small and powerless now, but he didn't have to stay that way. He could grow, learn, and one day be the doctor who made sure no family had to go through what they were experiencing. As they sat there together, Caden's heart was still heavy with worry for his father. But alongside that worry, a new feeling began to grow. A fierce determination to make his dream a reality. Not just for himself, but for all the families who needed hope and healing. The days following Anthony's collapse were a blur of hospital visits, worried conversations, and sleepless nights. Caden spent every moment he could by his father's bedside, holding his hand and whispering words of encouragement. But despite the doctor's efforts and the family's fervent prayers, Anthony's condition continued to worsen. One rainy afternoon, Caden sat next to his father, reading aloud from a medical textbook he'd borrowed from the library. He was in the middle of explaining a complex procedure when he noticed his father's breathing had changed. Dad? Caden's voice trembled as he set the book aside. Dad, can you hear me? Anthony's eyes fluttered open, focusing on his son with difficulty. Caden, he whispered, his voice barely audible. I'm proud of you, son. Don't, don't ever forget that. Tears welled up in Caden's eyes as he squeezed his father's hand. Dad, please, you're going to be okay. You have to be. But Anthony's eyes were already closing, his grip on Caden's hand loosening. The steady beep of the heart monitor suddenly turned into a long, continuous tone. Dad! Caden cried out, panic rising in his chest. No, please! Someone help! Nurses and doctors rushed into the room, but Caden knew in his heart it was too late. His father was gone.
The funeral was held a few days later. Caden stood beside his mother, both of them dressed in black, as friends and family gathered to pay their respects. The sky was overcast, mirroring the somber mood of the day. As the service ended and people began to disperse, Caden found himself standing alone in front of his father's freshly covered grave. He stared at the headstone, reading the words over and over. Anthony Johnson, beloved husband and father. The weight of loss pressed down on Caden's shoulders, threatening to crush him. He couldn't shake the feeling that he had failed his father. If only he had been a doctor already. Maybe he could have saved him. Maybe he could have found a way to get him better treatment. Caden's dreams of becoming a doctor, once so vibrant and full of hope, now seemed to mock him. What was the point of dreaming so big when the harsh realities of life could snatch everything away in an instant? He thought about the struggles his family had faced, the sacrifices his parents had made. And now, with his father gone, how could he possibly continue to pursue his dream? The medical school textbooks that once excited him now felt like painful reminders of what he couldn't achieve. As Caden stood there lost in his grief and self-doubt, he felt his dreams slipping away like sand through his fingers. The path ahead seemed darker and more uncertain than ever before. After the funeral, Caden and Evelyn returned to their now quiet home. The absence of Anthony's laughter and warm presence left a palpable void. Caden slumped onto the couch, his eyes red and puffy from crying. Evelyn sat beside him, wrapping her arm around his shoulders. Caden, honey, she said softly, her voice filled with love and concern. I know you're hurting. We both are. But your father, he was so proud of you. Caden looked up at his mother, his eyes brimming with fresh tears. How can I go on without him, Mom? How can I chase my dreams when he's not here to see them? Evelyn took a deep breath, fighting back her own tears. Your father may not be here in body, but he's always with us in spirit. And I know without a doubt that he would want you to keep going. She reached into her purse and pulled out a worn envelope. I found this in your father's things. It's addressed to you. With trembling hands, Caden took the envelope. Inside was a letter written in his father's familiar handwriting. My dear Caden, if you're reading this, it means I'm no longer with you. I'm sorry I couldn't stay longer, but I want you to know how proud I am of you. Your dream of becoming a doctor isn't just a child's fantasy, it's a calling. Don't let anyone, including me, make you doubt yourself. The world needs more healers like you. Keep pushing forward, son. Your mother and I have always believed in you. Now it's time for you to believe in yourself. Love always. Dad. Caden clutched the letter to his chest, tears streaming down his face. Evelyn held him close, letting him cry. As the days passed, Caden's grief remained, but something else began to grow alongside it. Determination. He threw himself into his studies with renewed vigor, spending long hours poring over textbooks and medical journals. One evening, as Caden sat at the kitchen table surrounded by papers, Evelyn approached him with a steaming mug of hot chocolate. You're working so hard, she said, setting the mug down beside him. Caden looked up, a small smile on his face. I have to, Mom. For Dad. For you. For myself. I'm going to become a doctor, no matter what it takes. Evelyn's eyes shone with pride. I know you will, honey. And when the time comes for you to leave this town to pursue your education, I'll be right here cheering you on. Caden's smile faltered slightly. Leave? But what about you? Don't you worry about me, Evelyn said firmly. Your father and I always dreamed of you flying higher than we ever could. This town, it's too small for your big dreams. Caden nodded, his heart heavy but filled with an uncertain hope. He turned back to his books, more determined than ever to make his parents proud and fulfill his dream of becoming a doctor. Years had passed since that fateful day when Caden had vowed to pursue his dream of becoming a doctor. Now, at 25, he found himself in the midst of his second year of medical school. The journey had been far from easy, but Caden's determination never wavered. As he walked into the lecture hall one crisp autumn morning, Caden felt the familiar weight of expectation on his shoulders. He took his usual seat near the front, ignoring the sideways glances and whispers that followed him.
Dr. Hartley, the anatomy professor, began his lecture. Today, we'll be discussing the intricacies of the cardiovascular system, he announced, his eyes scanning the room. Mr. Johnson, perhaps you'd like to start us off by explaining the function of the left ventricle? Caden straightened in his seat, ready to answer. But before he could open his mouth, a voice from behind him spoke up. Excuse me, Dr. Hartley, said Brad, a classmate known for his snide remarks. Are you sure you want to ask him? I mean, how did he even get in here? The room fell silent. Caden felt his face grow hot as all eyes turned to him. He clenched his fists under the desk, willing himself to stay calm. Dr. Hartley frowned. Mr. Anderson, that's entirely inappropriate. But Brad wasn't finished. Come on, we're all thinking it. Affirmative action, right? It's not fair to the rest of us who actually earned our spots. Caden's heart pounded in his chest. He wanted to stand up to defend himself. But the words wouldn't come. Doubt, an old and unwelcome friend, crept back into his mind. Maybe Brad was right. Maybe he didn't belong here. As the whispers around him grew louder, Caden closed his eyes, trying to block out the noise. Suddenly, he heard his mother's voice, clear as day, echoing in his memory. Caden, honey, she had said on the day he left for medical school, her eyes shining with pride. You've worked so hard for this. Don't ever let anyone make you doubt yourself. You belong there just as much as anyone else. Caden took a deep breath, drawing strength from the memory of his mother's unwavering faith in him. He opened his eyes, meeting Brad's smug gaze. The left ventricle, Caden began, his voice steady and clear, is responsible for pumping oxygenated blood to the rest of the body through the aorta. It's the strongest chamber of the heart, with walls that are 1 to 1.5 centimeters thick. He continued explaining the intricacies of the left ventricle's function with precision and confidence. As he spoke, the whispers died down, replaced by a stunned silence. Dr. Hartley nodded approvingly. Excellent, Mr. Johnson. That's precisely correct. Caden sat back down, his heart still racing but now with a sense of triumph rather than fear. He might face more challenges, more doubts, but in that moment, he knew he was exactly where he belonged. Despite the challenges he faced, Caden threw himself into his studies with renewed determination. His days became a blur of lectures, labs, and long nights hunched over textbooks. The harsh words of his classmates still echoed in his mind, but he refused to let them define him. Every evening after classes, Caden rushed to his part-time job at a local diner. The work was exhausting, but it helped pay for his textbooks and living expenses. He'd returned to his tiny apartment late at night, his feet aching and his mind foggy with fatigue. But instead of collapsing into bed, he'd brew a strong cup of coffee and open his books once more. Just a few more hours, he'd mutter to himself, rubbing his tired eyes. You can do this, Caden. His hard work began to pay off. Caden's test scores consistently ranked among the top in his class. Professors who had once regarded him with skepticism now nodded approvingly when he raised his hand to answer questions. But with each success, the divide between Caden and his classmates seemed to grow wider. During group study sessions, Caden often found himself sitting alone. His offers to join others met with awkward silences or mumbled excuses. In the cafeteria, he'd scan the crowded tables, searching for a friendly face, only to end up eating by himself once again. One particularly lonely evening, Caden sat in the library, surrounded by stacks of medical journals. He glanced around at the other students, laughing and chatting in Hushed tonas as they worked together. A lump formed in his throat as he realized that despite his academic achievements, he had no one to share them with. The systemic discrimination that permeated the medical field had left Caden without allies. His classmates, many of whom came from privileged backgrounds, seemed unable or unwilling to look past their preconceptions. Even those who didn't openly discriminate against him kept their distance, as if unsure how to bridge the gap. Caden sighed, turning back to his books. He traced his finger along a diagram of the human heart, remembering why he had chosen this path. He might be alone now, but one day, he'd be able to help people who needed him. That thought gave him the strength to keep going, even on the loneliest of nights.
Caden stared at the letter in his hands, his eyes tracing over the words again and again. The community center in his hometown was hosting an event to celebrate local success stories, and they wanted him to speak. His heart raced as conflicting emotions washed over him. They want me to come back, he whispered, his voice a mixture of disbelief and bitterness. Memories of laughter and mockery echoed in his mind. He remembered the pain of being dismissed, the sting of Mrs. Gibbon's condescending smile. Part of him wanted to crumple up the letter and throw it away, to forget about the place that had once made him feel so small. But another part of him, the part that sounded like his mother's voice, whispered that this was an opportunity, a chance to show how far he'd come, to inspire others who might be facing the same challenges he once did. Caden picked up his phone and dialed his mother's number. When Evelyn answered, he could hear the smile in her voice. Mom, I got a letter from home, he said, his voice tight with emotion. They want me to speak at some community event. There was a pause on the other end of the line. Oh, baby, Evelyn said softly. How do you feel about that? Caden sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know, Mom. Part of me doesn't want to go back there. After everything that happened... I understand, Evelyn said. But Caden, think about how far you've come. You're living your dream, despite what anyone said. Maybe this is your chance to show them that. Her words settled over him like a warm blanket. Caden closed his eyes, remembering all the times his mother had encouraged him, had believed in him when no one else did. You're right, he said finally. I'll go. Maybe I can help someone else who's feeling lost like I was. That's my boy. Evelyn said, pride evident in her voice. You go and show them what you're made of. After hanging up, Caden sat at his desk staring at the letter. Despite his decision, a knot of anxiety formed in his stomach. He was going back, but the bitterness he thought he'd left behind still lingered. As he began to draft his speech, Caden found himself grappling with conflicting emotions. Pride in his achievements warred with the hurt of past rejections. He wanted to inspire others, but a part of him also wanted to prove everyone wrong. I can do this, he muttered to himself, echoing the words he'd said so many times during late night study sessions. I can face my past and maybe help someone else in the process. Caden stepped off the bus, his heart pounding as he took in the familiar sights of his hometown. The same cracked sidewalks, the same rundown buildings, the same feeling of hopelessness that seemed to hang in the air. He adjusted his tie, feeling out of place in his crisp suit among the worn-down surroundings. As he walked down Main Street, memories flooded back. The corner store where he used to buy candy after school, the park where he'd dreamed of a better future, the community center where he was now headed to give his speech. Everything looked smaller somehow, yet the weight of his past felt heavier than ever. People began to recognize him as he passed. Whispers followed in his wake and he could feel eyes on him. Some faces he remembered from his childhood, now older and more weathered. A few approached him, smiles plastered on their faces. Caden, is that really you? Mrs. Winson, his old neighbor, called out. Look at you, all grown up and successful. Caden forced a polite smile. Hello, Mrs. Winson. It's good to see you. She beamed at him. We're all so proud of you, dear. Who would have thought our little Caden would become a doctor? Her words, though kind, stung. Caden remembered clearly how she had laughed along with others when he'd shared his dream. He nodded politely and moved on, the interaction leaving a bitter taste in his mouth. As he neared the community center, he saw a familiar face that made his stomach churn. Mrs. Gibbons, his old teacher, was standing outside, greeting people as they entered. When she spotted Caden, her eyes widened in recognition. Caden, she exclaimed, her voice dripping with honey. My star pupil, I always knew you'd do great things. Caden felt a surge of anger. He remembered clearly the day she had smiled condescendingly at his dream, how she had done nothing to stop the laughter of his classmates. But he took a deep breath, remembering his mother's words about forgiveness and growth. Hello, Mrs. Gibbons, he said, his voice steady. It's been a long time. She reached out to pat his arm, and it took all of Caden's willpower not to flinch away. I'm so proud of you, dear. You've really shown everyone what you're capable of. 
Caden nodded, unable to form a response. He excused himself and entered the building, his emotions in turmoil. The admiration from those who had once doubted him felt hollow, and he found himself longing for the genuine support of his mother. As he made his way to the stage, Caden realized that while he had changed and grown, his hometown remained trapped in the same cycle of poverty and small-mindedness. The weight of his past, the pain of rejection, and the bitterness he thought he'd left behind all came rushing back. Caden took a deep breath as he stepped up to the podium. The community center was packed, faces both familiar and unfamiliar looking up at him expectantly. He cleared his throat, his hands trembling slightly as he adjusted the microphone. Good evening, everyone, he began, his voice steady despite his nerves. It's... it's strange to be back here, standing in front of you all. As he spoke, Caden's eyes scanned the crowd. He saw old classmates, neighbors, and even some of his father's former co-workers. Then, his gaze landed on Mrs. Gibbons, standing at the back of the room. Her face was as stern as he remembered, her arms crossed tightly over her chest. Caden felt a flicker of the old hurt and anger, but he pushed it aside, focusing on his speech. Many of you knew me as a boy with big dreams. Dreams that some thought were impossible. He paused, remembering the laughter, the mockery. But I'm here to tell you that dreams aren't impossible. They're the fuel that keeps us going, even when the world tells us to give up. As Caden spoke about his journey, the challenges he faced, and the importance of perseverance, he noticed the audience becoming more engaged. People nodded, some wiped away tears, and a few even cheered at his words of encouragement. It wasn't easy, Caden admitted, his voice thick with emotion. There were times I wanted to quit, times I thought maybe everyone who doubted me was right. But I remembered the words of my mother, who always believed in me, and my father, whose struggle inspired me to push harder. Throughout his speech, Caden's gaze kept drifting back to Mrs. Gibbons. While the rest of the audience seemed moved by his words, she remained stoic, her expression unreadable. It was as if she was still the same teacher who had dismissed his dreams all those years ago. As Caden concluded his speech, the room erupted in applause. People stood up, cheering and clapping enthusiastically. But even as he smiled and thanked the crowd, Caden couldn't shake the unease that Mrs. Gibbons's presence stirred in him. The old feelings of resentment bubbled up inside him. Despite his success, despite proving her and everyone else wrong, her cold demeanor made Caden feel like that small, humiliated boy all over again. He realized that while he had grown and changed, some wounds from his past were still raw. As people began to approach him with congratulations and kind words, Caden's mind remained focused on Mrs. Gibbons. He wondered if she felt any remorse for her past actions, if she recognized the impact her dismissal had on him. The conflict between his desire for recognition from her and his lingering anger left him feeling conflicted and unsettled. Years after the community event, Caden became a licensed doctor, the memory of his hometown visit lingered, a mix of pride and unresolved emotions. Then one evening, as he pored over his textbooks, his phone buzzed with an unfamiliar number. Caden answered cautiously. Hello? Is this Dr. Caden? A trembling voice asked. I'm not a doctor yet, but this is Caden. Who's calling? The caller introduced herself as Mrs. Gibbon's daughter. Caden's heart skipped a beat at the mention of his former teacher's name. Mrs. Gibbons has fallen seriously ill, the daughter explained, her voice cracking. The local hospital is understaffed and struggling. We... we were hoping you might be able to help. Caden felt a rush of conflicting emotions. His first instinct was to refuse. Mrs. Gibbons had never shown him kindness or support. Why should he help her now? But as he listened to the desperation in her daughter's voice, Caden found himself torn. He thought of the Hippocratic Oath he would soon take, promising to treat all patients equally. He remembered his own father's suffering and how helpless he had felt. I... I'll need to think about it, Caden said finally, his voice tight with emotion. After hanging up, Caden paced his small apartment, his mind racing. On one hand... The thought of helping Mrs. Gibbons made his stomach churn. She had humiliated him, dismissed his dreams, and never showed an ounce of remorse. Part of him wanted to let her experience the same helplessness he had felt as a child.
On the other hand, Caden had become a medical student to help people, regardless of who they were. His mother's words echoed in his mind. Kindness is not just for those who deserve it, but for those who need it most. Caden sat on the edge of his bed, his head in his hands. The weight of the decision pressed down on him. Should he rise above the past and offer help to someone in need? Or should he protect himself from further hurt by refusing to engage with Mrs. Gibbons? As the night wore on, Caden wrestled with his conscience. The memory of his father's final days in the hospital flashed through his mind, along with the faces of countless patients he had helped during his training. He thought about the boy he once was, filled with dreams and hope, and the man he was becoming. Caden sat on the edge of his bed, his father's worn Bible clutched in his hands. The leather was soft and familiar, a comfort he often sought in times of turmoil. He ran his fingers over the gold-embossed letters, remembering how his father would read from it every night, even when exhausted from a long day's work. What would you do, Dad? Caden whispered, his voice barely audible in the quiet room. He opened the Bible, letting it fall open to a well-worn page. His eyes landed on a passage his father had underlined. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Caden's chest tightened as he read the words. Mrs. Gibbons's face flashed in his mind, her condescending smile, her dismissive words. The pain of that childhood memory still stung, even after all these years. But then another memory surfaced. His father, sitting on the porch swing, teaching him about forgiveness. Son, his father had said, his voice gentle but firm. Grace isn't about whether someone deserves it. It's about who we choose to be. Tears welled up in Caden's eyes as he remembered his father's words. He looked around his small apartment, at the medical textbooks piled high on his desk, at the framed photo of his parents smiling proudly at his high school graduation. I became a doctor to help people, Caden said aloud, his voice shaky but growing stronger. All people, even, even those who hurt me. He stood up, wiping his eyes with the back of his hand. With a deep breath, he picked up his phone and dialed the number Mrs. Gibbon's daughter had left. Hello, he said, his voice steady and clear. This is Caden. I've thought about it, and I'd like to help Mrs. Gibbons if I can. As he spoke the words, Caden felt a weight lift from his shoulders. He knew the path ahead wouldn't be easy but he also knew he was making the right choice. In helping Mrs. Gibbons, he wasn't just honoring his father's memory, he was becoming the man he had always dreamed of being. Caden arrived at the hospital, his heart racing as he approached Mrs. Gibbons' room. The hallway seemed to stretch endlessly before him, each step bringing him closer to a confrontation with his past. As he pushed open the door, the gravity of the situation hit him full force. Mrs. Gibbons lay still in the hospital bed, her once imposing figure now frail and small. Her family huddled around her, their faces etched with worry and fear. The beeping of machines filled the air, a constant reminder of how precarious her condition was. Dr. Johnson, Mrs. Gibbons' daughter said, her voice trembling. Thank you for coming. Caden nodded, his professional demeanor taking over as he approached the bed. He could feel the weight of expectation in the room, the hope that rested on his shoulders. What's her current status, he asked, addressing the nurse. As the nurse rattled off Mrs. Gibbons' vital signs, Caden's trained eye scanned the monitors. His brow furrowed as he recognized the severity of her condition. She's in septic shock, Caden explained to the family. We need to act fast. Without hesitation, Caden sprang into action. He called for specific medications, adjusted IV drips, and prepared for a central line insertion. His hands moved with practiced precision, years of training guiding his every move. The room fell silent except for Caden's calm, authoritative voice giving instructions. The family watched it in our way as the young doctor they once knew as a dreaming chilled now worked to save a life. As Caden inserted the central line, a critical moment for administering medication directly to Mrs. Gibbons's heart, he felt a flutter of doubt. For a split second, the weight of their shared history threatened to shake his confidence. But then he remembered his father's words about grace and his hands steadied. The procedure was delicate and time seemed to stand still. Sweat beaded on Caden's forehead as he focused intently on his task.
The family held their breath, the tension in the room palpable. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Caden stepped back. It's done, he said, his voice steady despite his racing heart. For several agonizing moments, they all watched the monitors, waiting for a sign. Then, slowly but surely, Mrs. Gibbons's vitals began to stabilize. A collective sigh of relief filled the room. As if on cue, Mrs. Gibbons' eyes fluttered open. She was weak, her gaze unfocused, but unmistakably alive. Her daughter rushed to her side, tears of joy streaming down her face. Mom, she choked out, grasping her mother's hand. You're okay. The doctor, Dr. Johnson saved you. Mrs. Gibbons' eyes slowly found Caden, recognition dawning in her gaze. For a moment, they just looked at each other, years of history passing between them in silence. Then, Mrs. Gibbons' daughter turned to Caden, her eyes shining with gratitude. Thank you, she said, her voice thick with emotion. We can't thank you enough for what you've done. Caden nodded, a mix of emotions swirling inside him. As he looked at Mrs. Gibbons, weak but alive, he felt a sense of accomplishment that went beyond just saving a life. He had faced his past and chosen compassion over resentment. As the family filed out of the room, leaving Caden alone with Mrs. Gibbons, a heavy silence settled between them. The beeping of the monitors seemed to grow louder, filling the space where words should have been. Mrs. Gibbons' voice, weak but determined, finally broke the quiet. Caden, she said, her eyes fixed on him. I need to speak with you. Caden moved closer to her bedside, his face a mask of professional composure. But beneath the surface, a storm of emotions raged. I... I owe you an apology, Mrs. Gibbons began, her voice quavering. All those years ago, I didn't believe in you. I never thought someone like you could achieve what you have. Caden remained silent, his jaw clenched as memories of his childhood humiliation flooded back. He could still hear the laughter of his classmates, still see Mrs. Gibbons' condescending smile. I was wrong, she continued, her eyes filling with tears. So terribly wrong. I belittled your dreams, made you feel small. And for that, I am truly sorry. As Mrs. Gibbons spoke, Caden felt a whirlwind of emotions. Anger bubbled up inside him, years of hurt and resentment threatening to spill over. But alongside it, a small spark of compassion flickered. I let my own prejudices blind me, Mrs. Gibbons admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. I couldn't see past, past the color of your skin, past where you came from. I failed you as a teacher and as a human being. Caden's hands gripped the rail of the hospital bed, his knuckles turning white. He wanted to lash out, to tell her how much her words had hurt him, how they had haunted him for years but he also saw the genuine remorse in her eyes, the weight of her regret. You've become an extraordinary doctor, Caden, Mrs. Gibbons said, her eyes meeting his. And an even better person. You saved my life today, despite everything. I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I needed you to know how sorry I am. As Mrs. Gibbons finished speaking, Caden found himself at a crossroads. The anger and hurt of his past urged him to reject her apology to let her feel the sting of his success. But the compassion that had driven him to become a doctor, the lessons of grace his parents had taught him, pulled him in another direction. He stood there, torn between these conflicting emotions as Mrs. Gibbons waited for his response. The weight of their shared history hung in the air between them, awaiting resolution. Caden stood in silence for what felt like an eternity, his mind racing with conflicting emotions. The steady beep of the heart monitor filled the room as he wrestled with his thoughts. Finally, he took a deep breath and looked directly at Mrs. Gibbons. I forgive you, he said softly, his voice barely above a whisper. The words hung in the air for a moment before their full weight settled on both of them. Mrs. Gibbons's eyes widened in surprise, then filled with tears. She reached out a trembling hand, which Caden hesitantly took. Thank you, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. I don't deserve your kindness, Caden. As Mrs. Gibbons began to cry, Caden felt something shift inside him. The anger and resentment he had carried for so long began to melt away, 
replaced by a sense of release. It was as if a heavy burden had been lifted from his shoulders. We all make mistakes, Caden said, surprised by the gentleness in his own voice. What matters is that we learn from them and try to do better. Mrs. Gibbons nodded, unable to speak through her tears. Caden stood there holding her hand, feeling emotionally drained but strangely at peace. After a few moments, Caden gently squeezed Mrs. Gibbons' hand and let go. You need to rest now, he said, his professional demeanor returning. I'll check on you again tomorrow. As he walked out of the hospital room, Caden felt a mix of emotions. His heart was heavy with the weight of the conversation, but there was also a newfound clarity in his mind. The bitterness that had been a constant companion for so long was fading, replaced by a sense of calm. In the quiet hallway of the hospital, Caden paused for a moment, leaning against the wall. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath, feeling the tension leave his body. When he opened his eyes again, the world seemed a little brighter, a little more hopeful. With steady steps, Caden made his way out of the hospital. The cool night air greeted him as he stepped outside, and he took another deep breath, feeling the peace within him grow stronger. As Caden packed his suitcase ready to return to his life as a doctor, a commotion outside caught his attention. He peered out the window to see people running down the street, their faces etched with worry. Curious, he stepped outside onto the porch. Dr. Caden, Dr. Caden, a frantic woman called out rushing towards him. Please, you have to help us. Caden's brow furrowed with concern. What's happening? He asked, his voice calm but urgent. The woman, Mrs. Dela Cruz from down the street, was breathless. It's the children, she gasped. They're falling ill all over town. High fevers, strange symptoms. The hospital is overwhelmed. Just then, Caden's phone buzzed with a flurry of messages. He glanced at the screen, seeing urgent pleas from various townspeople. His heart raced as he scrolled through the messages, each one more desperate than the last. Please, Dr. Caden, we need your help. My little girl is burning up. The doctors don't know what's wrong. You're our only hope. Please stay and help us. Caden's mind reeled. The very people who had once laughed at his dreams were now begging for his expertise. He felt a mix of vindication and concern wash over him. As he stood there, torn between his planned departure and the urgent need before him, more people began to gather on the street. Parents with worry etched on their faces, some even carrying feverish children in their arms, approached his house. Dr. Caden... One man called out, a little boy limp in his arms. I know we weren't kind to you before, but please, our children need you. Caden looked at the growing crowd, their eyes filled with fear and hope. He thought of his own journey, of the obstacles he'd overcome, and of the reason he became a doctor in the first place, to help those in need. With a deep breath, Caden stepped off the porch and addressed the crowd. I'll do everything I can, he said, his voice steady and reassuring. Tell me everything you know about this illness. As the townspeople began to share what they knew, Caden's mind was already racing, formulating a plan. He knew he was facing his biggest challenge yet, but he was ready to face it head on. Caden stood on the porch, his suitcase forgotten behind him as he faced the desperate crowd. The weight of their pleas pressed down on him, and he felt his shoulders sag with exhaustion. He had just been through an emotional roller coaster with Mrs. Gibbons, and now this new crisis was demanding his attention. For a moment, Caden closed his eyes, torn between his desire to return to his life and the urgent need before him. He could feel the eyes of the townspeople on him, their hope palpable in the air. These were the same people who had once laughed at his dreams, who had dismissed him as just another dreamer. Now, they looked at him as their only hope. As he stood there, conflicted, Caden heard his mother's voice in his mind, as clear as if she were standing right beside him. Caden, baby, she seemed to say, her voice warm and encouraging. You were given this gift for a reason. Use it to heal, to make a difference. He remembered the countless nights his mother had sat with him, wiping away his tears after another day of ridicule at school. She had always believed in him, even when no one else did. And now... Her words echoed in his heart.
reminding him of why he became a doctor in the first place. Caden opened his eyes looking at the worried faces before him. He saw fear in their eyes, but also a glimmer of hope. Despite of his exhaustion, despite the hurt they had caused him in the past, he felt a surge of compassion. With a deep sigh, Caden stepped off the porch. All right, he said, his voice steady and determined. I'll do what I can to help, but I need everyone's cooperation. A collective sigh of relief swept through the crowd. Parents hugged their children tighter, some wiping away tears of gratitude. Caden's mind was already racing, thinking of the steps he needed to take. First, we need to gather all the information we can about this illness. I want to hear from every family affected. As he began organizing the townspeople, setting up a makeshift clinic in the community center, Caden felt a mix of emotions. He was tired, yes, but there was also a sense of purpose driving him forward. This was why he had become a doctor, to help those in need regardless of who they were or how they had treated him in the past. As he worked tirelessly through the night, examining sick children and comforting worried parents, Caden realized that this crisis was more than just a test of his medical skills. It was a test of his character, of his ability to forgive and to heal not just bodies but hearts as well. Caden's world became a whirlwind of activity as he threw himself into the crisis. The community center, now a makeshift clinic, buzzed with worried voices and the occasional cry of a sick child. Caden moved from bed to bed, his brow furrowed in concentration as he examined each patient. Dr. Johnson, we've got another case, a local nurse called out, ushering in a mother cradling her feverish daughter. Caden nodded, his eyes tired but determined. Bring her over here, he said, patting an empty cot. As he checked the child's vitals, Caden's mind raced. The symptoms were consistent with the others, high fever, fatigue, and a strange rash. But what was causing it? He turned to Dr. Martinez, one of the local physicians. Any luck with the lab results? Dr. Martinez shook her head, frustration evident in her voice. Nothing conclusive yet. We're still waiting on some tests. Caden ran a hand through his hair, feeling the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. He had been working nonstop for days, catching naps when he could between patients. The emotional toll was heavy, seeing so many sick children and their terrified parents. As he moved to the next patient, Caden caught sight of his reflection in a window. Dark circles underlined his eyes, and his normally neat appearance was disheveled. But in those tired eyes, there was an unwavering resolve. We need to check the water supply again, Caden said to Dr. Martinez. And I want to review all the patient's histories. There has to be a common link we're missing. The local doctors nodded, respect evident in their eyes. Despite their initial skepticism, Caden's dedication and expertise had quickly won them over. As the night wore on, Caden found himself sitting alone in the clinic's makeshift office, surrounded by patient files and medical journals. His eyes burned from lack of sleep, but he couldn't rest. Not while children were suffering. A soft knock at the door interrupted his thoughts. It was Mrs. Wilson, one of the mothers whose child he had treated earlier. Dr. Johnson, she said softly, I brought you some coffee you've been working so hard. Caden accepted the cup gratefully, touched by the gesture. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. How's little Mara doing? Her fever's down a bit, Mrs. Wilson replied, her eyes brimming with tears. I don't know what we'd do without you here. Caden felt a lump in his throat. He remembered all too well how this town had once treated him. But here was this woman, looking at him with such gratitude. It was a stark reminder of why he became a doctor in the first place. As Mrs. Wilson left, Caden turned back to his work with renewed energy. The answer was here somewhere, hidden in these files and test results. He had to find it, for Mara, for all the children counting on him. After days of relentless work, Caden's exhaustion was a ched deeply into his face. His eyes were bloodshot from countless hours poring over medical charts and test results. But as he stared at the latest lab report, a spark of realization ignited in his weary mind. This can't be, he muttered, double-checking the figures. His heart began to race as the pieces fell into place. The water supply! Caden burst out of the makeshift office, startling Dr. Martinez, who was checking on a patient nearby.
Dr. Martinez, I think I've found it, he exclaimed, his voice a mix of excitement and urgency. He quickly explained his discovery to Dr. Martinez and the other medical staff. The town's water supply had been contaminated with a rare strain of bacteria, likely due to recent flooding that had overwhelmed the local treatment plant. Without wasting a moment, Caden reached for the phone and dialed the mayor's office. Mayor Benison, this is Dr. Johnson. We've identified the cause of the epidemic. It's the water supply. We need to act immediately. The mayor's voice crackled over the line. Are you certain, Dr. Johnson? Absolutely. Caden replied firmly. We need to shut off the water supply and distribute bottled water to the entire town. And we must begin treatment for everyone who's been exposed. Within hours, the town sprang into action. Emergency services went door to door, informing residents about the contamination and distributing clean water. The water treatment plant was shut down for thorough decontamination. Back at the clinic, Caden worked tirelessly to administer the correct antibiotics to the sick children. As the hours ticked by, he began to see signs of improvement. Fevers started to break, and the mysterious rashes began to fade. Mrs. Wilson approached Caden, her eyes brimming with happy tears. Dr. Johnson, Mara's fever is gone. She's asking for food for the first time in days. Caden smiled, feeling a wave of relief wash over him. That's wonderful news, Mrs. Wilson. Keep her hydrated with the clean water and she should continue to improve. As word spread about the epidemic's cause and the ongoing recovery, a palpable sense of relief settled over the town. Parents hugged their recovering children tightly, and neighbors checked on one another with newfound care and concern. Caden stood at the window of the clinic, watching as life slowly returned to normal in the streets outside. He felt a deep sense of satisfaction knowing that his perseverance and knowledge had made a real difference in the lives of these people. In the days following the epidemic's resolution, the town began to steer with a newfound energy. The streets, once eerily quiet, now buzzed with the sounds of children playing and neighbors chatting. As the last of the patients were discharged from the makeshift clinic, word spread quickly about a special gathering to be held in the town square. On a warm Saturday morning, Nearly every resident of the small town crowded into the square. The air was thick with anticipation and gratitude. At the center of it all stood Caden, looking both proud and slightly uncomfortable with all the attention. Mayor Benison stepped up to the podium, his voice ringing out over the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to honor a true hero. Dr. Caden Johnson not only saved our children, but our entire community. As the mayor spoke, Caden's eyes scanned the crowd. He saw familiar faces, people who had once doubted him, now looking at him with admiration and respect. His gaze fell on his mother, Evelyn, who stood beaming with pride, tears glistening in her eyes. The mayor continued, Dr. Johnson's dedication, knowledge, and compassion have shown us the true meaning of heroism. It is with great pleasure that I announce the expansion of the Dr. Caden Johnson Scholarship Fund. This fund will now provide health education opportunities for our town's youth, ensuring that Dr. Johnson's legacy of healing continues for generations to come. A thunderous applause erupted from the crowd. As it died down, a small group of parents began to make their way towards Caden. Leading them was Mrs. Wilson, holding little Mara's hand. With tears streaming down her face, Mrs. Wilson embraced Caden. Dr. Johnson, she choked out. You saved my baby girl. I don't know how we can ever thank you enough. One by one, parents approached Caden, each with a story of gratitude. Some hugged him tightly. Others shook his hand with both of theirs, unable to let go. The emotion in the air was palpable, and Caden found himself overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and appreciation. A father, still wearing his factory uniform, stepped forward. Dr. Johnson, my son wouldn't be here today if it weren't for you. You're a true hero, son. You've given our community hope. As Caden looked around at the tearful, grateful faces surrounding him, he felt a profound sense of fulfillment. This was why he had become a doctor. This was what his father would have wanted. This was what his mother had always believed he could do. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the quiet cemetery, Caden and Evelyn made their way through the rows of headstones. Their footsteps were slow and deliberate, 
each lost in their own thoughts as they approached Anthony's final resting place. Caden's heart felt heavy as he stood before his father's grave. The polished stone bore his father's name, a silent testament to the man who had shaped so much of who Caden had become. With a deep breath, he knelt down, his hand resting gently on the cool surface of the headstone. Dad, Caden began, his voice barely above a whisper. I wish you could see how far we've come. You taught me about resilience, about never giving up even when the world seemed against us, and compassion. You showed me how to care for others, even when we had so little ourselves. Thank you, Dad, for everything. Evelyn stood quietly behind her son, her eyes brimming with tears as she listened to his heartfelt words. As Caden rose to his feet, he turned to face his mother, the woman who had been his rock through every storm. Mom, Caden said, his voice thick with emotion, I don't know where I'd be without you. Your love, your support, it's been everything. When the world laughed at my dreams, you believed in me. When I wanted to give up, you pushed me forward. I wouldn't be here, wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for you. Tears spilled down Caden's cheeks as he spoke, mirroring the ones that now flowed freely down Evelyn's face. She stepped forward, wrapping her arms around her son in a tight embrace. Oh, Caden, Evelyn whispered, her voice filled with pride and love. I always knew you had greatness in you. You've become more than I ever could have dreamed. Your father would be so proud of the man you've become just as I am. They stood there for a long moment holding each other as the evening breeze rustled through the trees. As they finally pulled apart, Caden felt a weight lift from his shoulders. He looked at his mother, seeing the strength and love that had carried them both through so much. Arm in arm, Caden and Evelyn walked away from Anthony's grave, their steps lighter than when they had arrived. As they made their way out of the cemetery, Caden felt a renewed sense of purpose coursing through him. He was ready to continue his journey as a healer, to honor his father's memory and his mother's unwavering faith in him. If you enjoyed the story of Caden and Evelyn, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.